to start sir okay okay sir good morning dear students welcome back to live online webinar classes of zoology this is raj kumar pct in zoology from tsrs jc lingampalli dear students let us begin our class yesterday we have started the unit 4b which is immune system and we have completed lecture 1 and this is the lecture 2 of that uh, unit okay so this is from your second year zoology what we are going to learn from this class so yesterday we have learned about the different types of lymphocytes of the immune system and we have also learned the difference between immunity and immune system isn't it so today we are going to learn about the types of phagocytes lymphoid organs soluble mediators of immunity you can watch all of them all the points on the screen so types of phagocytes lymphoid organs soluble mediators of immunity and uh, under the soluble mediators of immunity we are going to learn about uh, three concepts that is complement proteins cytokines antibodies and we learn about the antigens structure of antibody and processing and presentation of antigens and finally we learn about major histocompatibility complex dear students hope you are uh, confusing i i think you are confusing uh, after watching all these words because this is not repeated in any syllabus like in 10th class or in the first year you have not seen these words all words are new to you but don't worry i am here i will explain each and every word to you uh, while while we are learning okay don't worry let's see yesterday we have started the immune system and uh, we have learned about the different cells of the immune system under the cells of immune system we studied about the lymphocytes and types of lymphocytes there are b lymphocytes and t lymphocytes isn't it so today uh, uh, we will learn about the types of phagocytes yesterday we have learned till the process of phagocytosis i told you that phagocytosis is the cell eating okay. eating their wbc cells eats uh, the germs or the bacteria in uh, formal words we call it as phagocytosis okay it's also called as cell eating in general okay so it uh, engulfs the foreign particle or bacteria or virus which comes into contact with this wbc and uh, it phagocytosis with the help of uh, lysosomes in the body okay lysosomes uh, attached to the bacterium and uh, it breaks down the bacterium into several pieces and uh, the cellular debris which is made is again exocytosed from the cell and comes into the tissue uh, tissue fluids are extra cellular spaces so phagocytes are of two types mono nuclear phagocytes watch this slide and uh, poly nuclear phagocytes so today we are going to learn about phagocytes and auxiliary cells and also about different organs of the immune system immune system means nothing but the group of organs coordinated together and carrying out a function so here in the immune system we we studied the cells and we study about different organs also there are uh, lymphoid organs in the immune system these lymphoid organs are divided into two types uh classified into two types they are primary lymphocytes and uh, secondary lymphocytes so say for secondary lymphoid organs so in the primary lymphoid organs we study about the bone marrow thymus and bursa fabricus under the secondary lymphoid organs we study about spleen lymph nodes tonsils and peyer's patches okay so we will be learning about uh, their location and uh, function and structure okay let's see mononuclear phagocytes it is one kind of phagocytes and they are also called as localized phagocytes yesterday i explained to this but uh, due to 
less time i i ran very fast i mean the concept uh, um, you may not have understood so that's why i am repeating this again so these are the wbcs which are localized to uh, the tissues and organs okay so since they are existing in the organs not uh, uh, traveling through the uh, circulatory system they are called localized macrophages they are also called as mononuclear phagocytes example uh, in the brain whatever the uh, the phagocytes present in the brain are called as microglia kuffer cells are existing in the liver microcardial macrophages are existing in the um, walls of the heart and uh, intestinal macrophages located in the intestine blood monocytes are located in the uh, circulatory system connective tissue lymphocytes are located in the tissue of the body a muscular tissue and next uh, uterine macrophages are located in the uterine uter uterus of the female and splenic red pulp macrophages are located uh, at uh, the middle region uh, the, the lumbar region of the body and adipose uh, macrophages are located in the fat cells and uh, intraglomerular mesangial cells are located in the kidneys and placental cells placental macrophages are located in the placenta of women and langer hans cells located in the skin alveolar and bronchial macrophages located in the lungs osteoclast cells these are specialized cells located in the uh, in the bone and peritoneal macrophages located in the peritoneal cavity of the body uh, where all the organs are existing next uh, bone marrow macrophages are uh, located in the bone marrow. these are all are localized phagocytes which helps to uh, destroy the microorganisms which reach to the tissue level okay yesterday we have discussed bacteria or Uh, disease causing organisms are called pathogens these pathogens when they cross the first line of defense goes into the blood uh, and uh, with the help of blood through the circulatory system it reaches to the tissue level and it deposited it uh, gets settled in the different organs of the body so organs are also having the phagocytes to kill them so it is a protection to the organs okay next uh, polynuclear uh, phagocytes mononuclear phagocytes just now we have studied now polynuclear phagocytes is second type of phagocytes and uh, these are nothing but the wbc the ty type of wbc called the granulocytes the granulocytes are their monocytes and lymphocytes we have studied that but the granulocytes uh, which contain granules in the uh, cytoplasm they are called granulocytes they are they act as polynuclear phagocytes see here the neutrophils basophils and uh, eosinophils and basophils neutrophils helps in the phagocytosis okay yesterday we studied fight and eosinophil fights against the parasitic infection parasites about parasites you have learned last uh, last year in the biology of human welfare chapter there you have seen different kinds of parasites like protozoan helminthic and uh, arthropoda arthropoda uh, organisms or creatures which harm the body and create a disease in us basophils produce inflammatory and allergic reactions okay next uh, auxiliary cells auxiliary cells auxiliary cells are uh the helping cells of the immune system examples mast cells dendritic cells monocytes macrophages myeloid derived suppressor cells innate lymphoid cells basophils and uh, neutrophils okay these are all called auxiliary cells they uh, they do not produce any antibodies but hey, they help uh, in the mechanism of immune system hence they are called auxiliary cells okay so they give t cell immunity 
okay b cell immunity means uh, the immunity which is given with the help of antibodies but t cell immunity is different okay t cells uh, can be classified into t cytotoxic cells and t helper cells t cells do not produce any antibodies but they help to produce antibodies okay they stimulate b lymphocytes to for the production of antibodies hence they are called auxiliary cells let's see the immune system and what are the different organs present in the immune system and their location so immune system has lymphoid organs okay the main parts of the main cells of the immune system are lymph lymphocytes isn't it so hence uh, the name came name uh, lymphoid organs has lymphoid organs are of two types primary lymphoid organs and secondary lymphoid organs examples of primary lymphoid organs are bone marrow thymus and bursa fabricus bone marrow means uh, the marrow of the bone the whole hollow space in the bone contain the marrow that's called bone marrow bone marrow is the site where blood cells are produced okay so lymphocytes are produced in the bone marrow so that's why um, the type of lymphocytes are also called b lymphocytes isn't it so b lymphocytes produce in the bone marrow and mature in the bone marrow there is another organ organ called thymus thymus helps in the maturation of uh, lymphocytes hence uh, the cells which mature in the thymus are called uh, t lymphocytes okay and bursa fabricus is uh, not the part of mammals it is located it is uh, existing in the birds okay aves contain this bursa fabricus as a lymphoid organ secondary lymphoid organs are the sites of uh, mechanism okay so where the actual process take place right secondary lymphoid arg examples are spleen lymph node look at the slide spleen lymph nodes tonsils and pears patches so why secondary lymphoid organs are important the uh, in these organs bacteria are collected here and they are being killed by the lymphocytes okay they are the action sites of the immune system hence they are called secondary lymphoid organs okay hope you have understood the difference between primary lymphoid organs and secondary in the primary lymphoid organs the lymphocytes gets generated and matured and secondary lymphoid organs are the action sites of the lymphocytes okay so in the picture you can see different organs of the immune system tonsils and adenoids are located behind the jaws okay they are located here and uh, lymph nodes are located at the neck region and not only at the neck region all over the body the lymph nodes are you know they are spread all over the body thymus is located here Okay, near the heart next uh, lymphatic vessels are present all over the body they connect the lymph nodes and uh, spleen you can see here there is a, a structure called spleen just beside the uh, liver it, it exists and uh, spleen is a secondary lymphoid organ it is also called as uh the graveyard of rbc we will learn about the organs also in detail next uh, pears patches uh, located in the intestinal region and lymph nodes exist all over the body in lymphatic vessels and bone marrow here you can see the bone and uh, the inside inside of the bone in the hollow hollow cavity there is a marrow called bone bone marrow appendix also helps as a secondary lymphoid organ okay let's see here in the diagram in the picture you can uh, watch in detail about the lymphatic system 
lymphoid organs here you can see all the vessels are supplied to all parts of the body and these are called lymphatic vessels and uh, in the middle of the vessels there is a bulging surfaces you are able to see isn't it so small bulged surface surfaces that you are able to see they are called as lymph nodes okay lymph nodes thymus is located here you can see and the spleen is located here bone marrow is here okay so these are the lymphatic system and uh, lymphoid organs bone marrow so what is bone marrow it's most important because here in the picture you can see it in detail this is the bone marrow which is present inside the bone is actually a living cell and bones are made up of bone cells okay don't uh, consider it as a non living uh, object like uh, uh, sometimes we feel that bone is equal to the hair this external hair is non living isn't it but bones are not like that they have bone cells and they have supply of the blood also there are blood vessels in the bone let's see the lymphoid organs and their function why these lymphoid organs are important primary lymphoid organs example bone marrow thymus and bursa fabricus they are the sites where the lymphocytes are produced and matured okay here you can see lymph lymphatic stem cells they produced in the primary lymphoid organs on the slide you can see the primary lymphoid organs are produced in the lymph sorry this lymphatic stem cells uh, convert into lymphocytes in the primary lymphoid organs and they get matured okay and the secondary lymphoid organs are the example spleen lymph nodes tonsils pears patches and these are the sites where mature lymphocytes transform into functional lymphocytes okay so they after the maturity they become functional that means they act upon uh, the disease causing organisms to kill them okay and uh, after becoming functional lymphocytes what do they do they act upon target pathogen pathogen means disease causing microorganism okay these are the lymphoid organs and their functions let's see uh, the other functions of lymphatic organs lymph nodes they are important 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 lymphocytes of the ones are called matured here okay the, uh, so we have studied this these are the sites of immunity immune mechanism next spleen uh, destroys rbcs and reservoir of the blood it is the largest lymphoid organ and it filter the blood of uh, filter blood out of bacteria and antigen filled cells okay so spleen is called uh, the graveyard of rbc as well it destroys rbcs after their uh, life span rbcs life span is 120 days and after 120 days every rbc have to be destroyed and new rbcs are produced in the bone marrow next thymus gland it produces hormone called thymosine okay it fun functions in programming lymphocytes t cells and b cells t cells are matured here that's why they are called t lymphocytes okay so they become immune immuno competent uh, when it comes to the thymus immuno competent means they are ready to act upon uh the pathogens next uh, tonsils tonsils trap the bacteria and other microbes in the throat it is tonsils are located in the throat region pears patches they capture and destroy bacteria uh, in the intestine thereby preventing them from penetrating into intestinal wall just now i told you pears patches are located at the intestine region intestine small intestine is the region where the absorption of the nutrients take place so these nutrients get absorbed into uh, 
uh, they go into the blood at that region along with the food that we take there may be many microorganisms that should not enter our blood so here pears patches helps to capture the bacteria and destroy there itself okay so that's the function of pears patches let's see the soluble mediators of immunity so you have to learn about them they are most important molecules and structures which helps in the immunity uh, mechanism of immunity complement proteins first of all let's see what do what does this complement proteins do these are the group of inactive plasma proteins and cell surface proteins when activated they form membrane attack complex they make membrane attack complex mac which makes pores to target cells to make them swell and burst okay so these are nothing but the complement proteins are uh, the proteins of plasma and what do they do they make pores in the target cell okay so these are the complement proteins we are able to see they are able to make the pores to the pathogens okay so here you can see uh, the phagocytes entering to kill the pathogen they are entering inside the pathogen and uh, after entering to it it destroys the pathogen into several pieces this process is called as opsonization so phagocytes enters the pathogen and kills it the process can be called as opsonization okay what do they do they form coat on the surface of pathogens to attract phagocytes to kill them which is called opsonization here you can see they make a coat around the surface of the pathogens okay so by making that path uh, the surface coat they are attracted to the phagocytes phagocytes what do they do they do cell eating isn't it that nothing but they destroy the bacteria complement proteins and their activities together form the complement system okay so finally what you need to remember is complement proteins are the proteins which helps for the attract for, which helps for the making pores to the pathogens and also to attract those pathogens to the uh, phagocytes phagocytes are already always ready to kill the organism Okay, this is causing organism. Next is part of immune cytokines. The most important molecules. These are the uh, small soluble molecules secreted by T helper cells or infected cells. Whenever one cell is infected in the body, that one cell produces some messengers. Okay. to protect the other cells from uh, you know getting infected suppose a group of cells are pro- got affected and uh, what do they do they release some messages messengers in the form of some proteins these messengers reaches to the other uh, lymphocytes and give signal to the lymphocytes uh, about the arrival of these pathogens so these signaling messengers uh gives the signal to the lymphocytes and lymphocytes comes and attack attack the pathogens so they they can be called as a signaling uh, messengers cytokines are a category of signaling molecules that mediate and regulate immunity okay so that's what so they give a signal with the help of cytokines okay cytokines are category of signaling molecules that mediate and regulate immunity next uh, what do they do they stimulate phagocytosis and uh, cytolysis of the cells in a uh, cytolysis is uh, cy- cytokines are again of two types interleukins and uh, interferons so cytokines are the chemical messengers and uh, they can be Uh, secreted in the form of interleukins and interferons what do they do interleukins uh, these interleukins are produced by leukocytes leukocyte means wbc 
and they stimulate B lymphocytes and cause fever. Okay, so they are particularly important in stimulating immune responses. Okay? Interleukins produced by leukocytes and uh, they cause fever, so that our body temperature increases, and uh, due to the increase of temperature, also some of these some microorganisms are died. Next, interferons. Interferons are the antiviral proteins. Remember this word. Interferons are antiviral proteins produced by virally infected cells to protect the neighbor cells. So, cytokines are basically the messaging signaling molecules that are produced by infected cells. Suppose uh, our body cells, if they are infected by any virus, the infected cells produce these interferons to protect the neighboring cells. Okay, so interferons are antiviral proteins produced by infected, virally infected cells of our body. Okay, hope you have understood. Here in the diagram, you can see about the in cytokines. Here you can see. Uh, a bacteria or a path a virus is attacked a healthy cell when it came inside what it does it is in it is bind with our dna and it multiply virus is multiplied and it is getting out that means it uh, make the lysis of the cell so during this process the cell is completely destroyed but uh, the best thing that cell do is it produces some messages some messages in the form of cytokines and interferons to activate the immune system of the body. So here you can see the virally infected cell released cytokines and interferons for uh, giving signals to the lymphocytes. Here in the uh, diagram below also you can see cytokines are released by virally infected cells. What are the on antibodies? Okay. Right from beginning, I have been saying antibodies, antibodies. What are they? What they what they do is they identify the target pathogen by binding to the antigen. Antigen means here you can take it as a pathogen also. Okay. Antibodies are produced by B lymphocytes, and these antibodies, these structures of the antibodies bind to the pathogen and uh, eventually destroy the uh, pathogen okay so here in the picture you can see these are the disease causing microorganisms maybe bacteria or maybe virus let's say uh, take it as a coronavirus okay so these viral viruses or bacteria when invade our body our body lymphocytes of our body produces the Y-shaped antibodies. These antibodies attach to the surface of the antigens, nothing but the pathogens. Here in the picture you can see. And eventually it kills them. Okay. So antibodies are specific to its antigens. For example, antibodies produced against one bacterium cannot act on cannot act against another bacteria. Suppose the cholera is produced by Vibrio cholerae. Okay, it's a bacteria. It's a bacterium. So the antibody which is produced by the, uh, which is produced against the cholera bacteria or uh, Vibrio cholerae cannot work upon typhoid bacteria, Salmonella typhi. Okay, that means antibodies are specific to antigens or pathogens. Okay, so they are like lock and key. Suppose one lock only works to that uh, key is only works to that lock. It cannot open the other uh, lock, isn't it? In the same way, antibodies work. Antibodies are so specific to its antigens or the pathogens. There are two types of antibodies. Example, free or circulating antibodies and uh, surface antibodies. Circulating antibodies circulates the uh, in the body and the surface antibodies located on the B cells and memory cell surface, which are useful for identification. 
isn't it in the starting i have told you that immune system's major function is to identify the self and non self substances if any substance is non self that may be the bacteria or virus or any other substance so it has to be identified in the first place to be killed okay here in the diagram you can see this is an antigen nothing but the bacterium or a pathogen or any uh, substance antigen can be a protein can be a toxicant can be anything okay and uh, uh, this y shaped structure is antibody and here you can see uh, they are specific to its structure okay their structure should, should fit to the antigen that's why they are specific okay next antibodies are the armies of protein army of proteins produced by lymphocytes to fight against the against the pathogens okay antibodies are the army of proteins produced by lymphocytes and uh, fight against the pathogens hope you have understood if you have any doubts write down on a paper and consult your jl concerned jl okay so you may be get the doubts regarding this unit next uh, immunoglobulins that means antibodies are also called as immunoglobulins and uh, let's see the structure of these antibodies just now we i have told you that they are in y shaped structures and uh, if you observe deeply about uh, them you find four polypeptide chains of which two are long and two are short here you can see this is a long chain and uh, the another one is a short chain okay there are four chains of polypeptide polypeptide means nothing but the protein peptides are uh, the uh, the forms of the proteins the structure of the immunoglobulin is produced by rodney porter rodney porter is a, is a scientist who proposed its, its structure there are two heavy and uh, two light chains hence they are represented as h2 and l2 so these are the heavy chains which are long in structure and uh, there are short chains also these are light chains okay heavy chains and uh, light chains so this is one pair and this is the another pair that's why h2 h for heavy l means l for light here okay l2 h2 there are four polypeptide chains under which two are light and two are two are heavy hence uh, h2 l2 it can be represented as h2 l2 antibody molecules has two ends okay so the first end is fab end that means fragment antigen binding end so here you can see antigen binding end it is also called as para tope on the on the slide you can see the diagram and look at here antigen binding site that means where the antigen comes and bind the site where the antigen binds is called antigen binding site or it can be called as para para tope and the site of antigen which binds to the antibody is called epitope okay so epitope binds to the parotope parotope is a binding site of antibody okay hope you remember here in the picture you can see the antigen structure uh, suppose this is an antigen or any bacterium it has a surface marker this uh, uh, this will come and fit to the antigen binding site antigen is binding to the antigen binding site to the paratope this is called epitope and this is called paratope hope you have understood the difference between ap and paratopes and structure of immunoglobulins fab means antigen binding ending next fc end is nothing but fragment crystallizable or fragment cell binding end okay so this is the fc region and uh, these two are the fab regions okay 
now let's learn about what are these antigens okay antigen is present on the pathogens okay these are the molecules that can induce detectable immune response okay so examples of antigens are polysaccharides proteins lipoproteins nucleoproteins and nucleic acid so bacterial structure if you observe their cell wall is made by polysaccharides isn't it even a virus also contain its a uh, structure by the proteins which is made by the proteins capsids and capsomia they are all proteins and uh, their nucleic structure viral a single strand dna viruses double strand dna viruses are there so uh, basically these organism to be identified their chemical structure is most important so this chemical structure of the bacteria and viruses is uh, identified by our immune system okay that's what is happening in the immune system here this is a pathogen or say bacteria it has antigen on its surface on the surface it has antigen antigen binds to if antibodies are already existing they bind to the antigen and start killing this pathogen all the microorganisms pathogens toxicants means the poisonous substances are primarily made of the abo substances hence they are called antigens okay all disease causing parasites or microorganisms are basically their structure is formed by the polysaccharides proteins nucleic acids and etc antigens are recognized by b cell and t cells and uh, b cells produce antibodies against these antigens so when when an antigen enters our body or a pathogen enters our body to produce an antibody it takes around 6 to 7 days okay so by this time you will fall ill and you will get fever in this process and when the once the antibodies are produced by the b cells you again get healthy you will be recovered from the disease the site of antigen that binds with antibody is called epitope okay so just now we have learnt this epitope and paratope so this antigen surface is called as epitope because it is binding to the antibody and this surface is called paratope paratope binds to the epitope okay so that's about the antigens and antigens can be classified into two types uh, circulatory antigens and uh, intracellular uh, antigens intracellular means uh, inside the infected cells you find this uh, antigens mostly viruses viruses invade inside the cell and destroy the cells inside okay circulatory antigens and uh, intracellular antigen hope you have understood what is mean by this antigens okay. let's see the difference between antigens and antibodies due uh, using this picture here in the picture you can see an antibody uh, which is y shaped and uh, the round circular shapes that you are able to see are antigens or maybe the pathogens pathogens means the but this is causing organisms antibodies here in the picture you can see this is a bacterial cell and having uh, several epitopes on its surface uh, these epitopes are nothing but the antigen uh, sites and they are attached by the antibodies and antibodies when they attach to the antigens uh, they they undergo the process of immu uh, immunity and they destroy it how the anti bodies are going to kill the antigen is the mechanism is the immune mechanism which we learn in the next class okay don't confuse but remember as of now that anti bodies binds to the antigen what happens after the binding how do they destroy it is a process of uh, immune system and we will be learning in the next class let's see uh, the processing 
and uh, presentation of antigens. So what happened? What is meant by processing and presentation? Processing of antigens means uh, whenever a pathogen is phagocytosed by a macrophage, it breaks down by the action of lysosomes and remaining broken pieces are called antigen determinants. Antigen determinants. In the process of phagocytosis, I explained you that bacterium whenever engulfed by a WBC or any macrophage, it destroys inside and whatever the debris is formed, that is exocytosed. This cellular debris of the bacterium, the broken pieces of bacterium can be called as uh, antigen determinants. Antigen determinants. These antigen determinants contain epitopes, okay? Epitopes, which binds to the paratopes, okay? So here in the diagram, you can see uh, bacterium is entered and uh, it is destroyed and uh, the particles are sent outside. Then what is mean by presentation of antigen? Just now I told you about the processing of antigens means this, uh, destruction of the antigens. Now presentation is most important because those antigens uh, become the signaling molecules to the WBCs to produce for the production of antibodies against that particular pathogen. See here, antigen presentation is the process by which antigen is presented to the lymphocytes in the form of short peptide fragments. These associated, these are associated with antigen presenting molecules such as MHC class 1 and MHC class 2. Uh, of the surface of antigen presenting cells. Okay, so what is this? I will make you understand. Listen to here. Uh, processing of antigens means uh, engulfing the foreign bacteria or foreign substance and destroying it and uh, converting into pieces. So these are called antigen determinants. So these broken pieces of the bacterium or anything, they are uh, presented to the lymphocyte. Here, presentation means to whom it is presenting the cells are presenting these macrophages are presenting these uh, antigen determinants to the lymphocytes. Why they have to present to the lymphocytes? Because lymphocytes have to identify the structure of the pathogen and it has to create an antibody against it. Okay. It has to, it is also called as, antibodies are also called as cellular bullets, okay. For the production of antibodies, there is a need of identifying the non-self uh, determinants which are present. That's why the presentation is important. Hope you have understood. First thing is to kill the antigen and second thing, present it to the anti present it to the lymphocytes to identify the structure of these substances. Okay. Antigen presentation is a process by which antigen is presented to lymphocytes in the form of short peptide fragments. Here you can see the short peptide fragments are presented. In the last picture we have seen that. Okay, so what is mean by this MHC class one and MHC class two molecules? Look at here, what is this MHC is all about? So MHC full form is major histocompatibility complex, major histocompatibility complex. What are they? They are found on the surface of the nucleo, nucleated cells. Okay? So these are the molecules present on the surface of the nucleated cells. What do they do? They help in the presentation of the, uh, the debris, presentation of the antigen determinants. Major histocompatibility complex helps in the presentation of uh, antigen determinants. Just now in the, uh, I have told you the presentation of antigens, what is mean by it. So in that process, the major histocompatibility complex are uh, useful. Here in the diagram, you can see it's a Fernie diagram actually, but uh, for, for your understanding purpose, I kept this. 
suppose this is a protein or a microbacteria microorganism which is entered it is broken it is converted into many pieces that means they are phagocytosed by the proteolytic enzymes by the uh, lysosomes after the bro uh, breaking down they will be making the pieces of the protein or pieces of the microbacterium and these microbacterium pieces or the antigen determinants are carried by the mhc that means major histocompatibility complex that means molecules they present it to the outside for what for the identification for, uh, for and helping the lymphocytes to identify these molecules okay dear students hope you have understood mhc or major histocompatibility complex are the molecules which helps for the presentation of antigen uh determinants to the lymphocytes okay so these mhc are of two types class 1 mhc and class 2 mhc class 1 molecules are found on the nucleated cells and they help in the presentation of antigens to cytotoxic cells for cell mediated immunity so now you get the question what is meant by cell mediated immunity we will i will explain you this cell mediated and humoral immunity in the next class in detail but for that you need to understand this major histocompatibility complex and the location where it is formed let's see mhc class 2 molecules class 1 molecules are located on the surface of the nucleated cells whereas class 2 molecules they are present on the surface of antigen presenting cells okay antigen presenting cells examples of them are macrophages dendritic dendritic cells and b cells but uh, here mhc class 1 molecules are located in all the cells all the cells of the body because all cells of the body are mac are nucleated isn't it except uh, the rbc all the cells of the body are nucleated so mhc class 1 molecules are located on every cell of the body whereas mhc class 2 molecules are located only uh, on the antigen presenting cells okay and uh, mhc these antigen presenting cells also contains the mhc class 1 molecules okay mhc complex is in the human beings the mhc complex is named differently as human leukocyte antigen system okay hla system so in other organism we call it as mhc but when it comes to the human beings we have named it separately like human leukocyte antigen system okay hope you have understood mhc are major histocompatibility complex mhc class 1 molecules are existing on every cell of the body those who are nucleated and mhc class 2 molecules are only present on the antigen presenting cells okay hope uh, you have understood this if you get any doubts consult your jl or uh, my students you can call to me personally all the lingam lingampalli students i will clarify your doubts in detail okay dear students thank you for watching this class